Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at pyruvate transport for aerobic respiration, the link reaction, and then we'll finish with a summary. In the previous video we saw that glycolysis is the first step of respiration, and it occurs in the cytoplasm producing mainly two molecules of pyruvate and some ATP and NAD. So we form two molecules of pyruvate, two ATP and two NAD reduced. And this is happening here in the cytoplasm. But this isn't the end of the story. The pyruvate has the potential to be broken down even further to release more energy. Remember, the overall purpose of respiration is to break down molecules and form ATP. And by breaking down these molecules, the energy is released and it can be stored as the form of ATP. In glycolysis, we made some ATP, but there's a lot more to be gained. The fate of pyruvate in the direction that it goes down depends on whether or not oxygen is present. If oxygen is present, we undergo aerobic respiration and pyruvate goes down a particular path of reactions. If oxygen is absent and it's anaerobic, we still carry out respiration, but the pyruvate goes down different pathways. So the fate of the pyruvate depends on whether there's oxygen in the environment or if there isn't. If the oxygen is present, then aerobic respiration takes place and pyruvate needs to be transported into the mitochondrial matrix. This is where the next stages of respiration will occur. And in this video, we'll be talking about an aerobic situation. So glycolysis has occurred in the cytoplasm. And one of the main products of that are two molecules of pyruvate. The next stage is to get this pyruvate into the matrix of the mitochondria, which is the fluid and solution in the center of the mitochondrion. So firstly, the pyruvate is actively transported across the mitochondrial envelope, which is the outer and inner membranes, and it goes into the matrix by a transport protein called pyruvate hydrogen ion symporter, or symport. So essentially, if we imagine this is the cytoplasm, and on this side we have the matrix, and we can represent the envelope of the two membranes by one membrane. We need to get the pyruvate molecule, and remember there are two of them for the one glucose, we need to get this across into the matrix, and this requires active transport, and so this uses ATP. We've described the protein as being a pyruvate hydrogen ion symporter. A symporter means that it takes two things and it transports them together. So actually there's a hydrogen ion which goes with the pyruvate down the gradient. So it's the movement of this hydrogen ion down its gradient which allows the pyruvate and the ion itself to go into the matrix. The next stage of respiration, once the pyruvate is in the matrix, is called the link reaction. The link reaction overall involves converting pyruvate to a two-carbon acetyl group, and it takes place in the mitochondrial matrix. So at the end of glycolysis, we've got a three-carbon pyruvate. And remember, there are actually two of these made per glucose, but we'll go through as if there's only one of them. And this gets converted in the link reaction to a one, two-carbon acetyl group. So somewhere along the line, a carbon will be lost. In the linked reaction, a carboxyl group and hydrogen atoms are removed from the pyruvate. Sometimes you'll see link or links reaction, it means the same thing. So essentially, the pyruvate has a hydrogen atom on its molecule, and this will be removed. And also a carboxyl group, which contains one of the carbons, will also be removed. The removal of both leads to the formation of a two carbon acetyl group. Whenever a carboxyl group is removed from something, we call it decarboxylation. So in this case, we're taking off one of the carbons to remove a carboxyl group, and this will be the process of decarboxylation. Whenever hydrogen atoms are removed, we call this dehydrogenation. Sometimes it will be referred to as oxidation as well. So a hydrogen will also be taken off, and both of these processes will lead to the formation of the acetyl group. The decarboxylation and the dehydrogenation of pyruvate are both catalyzed by one large multi-enzyme complex, and the enzyme is called pyruvate dehydrogenase. So most enzymes are drawn quite simply, but pyruvate dehydrogenase has many different protein parts to it. It's a very complex enzyme. But just remember that even though it is called a dehydrogenase, it also catalyzes the decarboxylation and the removal of that carbon group. When the carboxyl group gets removed, carbon dioxide is produced as a product. So we've got one, two, three carbons in the pyruvate. And as the first carbon is removed, the carbon goes into the formation of a carbon dioxide molecule. And then we're left with two carbons in the acetyl final product. When the hydrogen atoms are removed from the pyruvate, 
they get accepted by NAD, producing more reduced NAD. So in glycolysis, we saw how NAD can be used to accept hydrogen atoms from molecules in the process of dehydrogenation. And this turns them into reduced NAD. So anytime NAD has a hydrogen, we call it reduced. And again, this will be used later on in different stages of respiration. Overall, the decarboxylation and the dehydrogenation of pyruvate results in the formation of an acetyl group. An acetyl group basically has two carbons and it will be used in the next step for respiration. At the end of this reaction, the acetyl group will combine with another molecule called coenzyme A, or COA, and this forms the compound acetyl coenzyme A. So just to illustrate that, we've got our two carbon acetyl, and it combines with another molecule called coenzyme A to form, just putting these words together, acetyl CoA, or acetyl coenzyme A. So that's the end of the link reaction, and this will move into the next stage of respiration. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.